All right. What's up, guys? Merry Christmas, by the way. So I probably woke up about probably about an hour ago, and I know a lot of y'all were requesting to do like a, a video deal to kind of talk about what I'm doing. And not only that, but I think I figured out my replay because I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get long replay records. So we're going to have different angles on this replay. Um, just want to kind of talk about, do some commentary. I'm going to do a couple laps right now to warm up and get rolling. Now, also, too, if you've ne never seen me before, my name is Uberin of Death, or known as Uberin's Domain, or Uberin Domain. We've been doing a lot of streaming on TikTok. Been getting really popular on TikTok. It's been really cool. So, I'm going to crank the music up in my headset, and we're going to drift this. Now, if you're wondering what car I'm using, I'm using the Matt's S13 Gravy Garage Car Pack, where it has the V8 swap. I love this car. It's great. No, I don't have an e-brake yet. I'm waiting for the e-brake to come in. So, hopefully, it'll come in this week. And I'll try to change it to daylight, but you know what? We're just going to leave it the way it is. So, right here the gear i'm going to be in this is going to be throttle this is brake and i'm in gear right now and then the blue is the clutch i have this on the stream so people people have requested to see that that people request the pedal cam right here and um using the, these socks these are actually socks from a jump park for a trampoline jump park that me and my daughter go to they have rubber on the bottom this actually helps out a lot so because i wear shoes it's just kind of not enough room down here so other than that let's roll it Don't clutch it, baby. Oh, oh. oh man, we went off. Oh. Anyways, so yeah, Clutch Kicker's map, fantastic map. So what I want to do, I got kind of the feel. It's actually kind of nice not having a bunch of people on the track because it gets crazy. But like I said, people have been requesting maybe do some commentary while I'm drifting, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, right? So I prefer the Mats S13 just for the style because there's not really a one shoe that fits all for how people drift. So the way I drift, I used to do, I do a lot of weight transfer, right? I believe weight transfer is an easy way to really keep a momentum, to keep a motion, kind of fill in all the turns. Now, is the e-brake essential? Yes. That's why I got the e-brake because e-brakes help extend your drift. If you come in too early on a turn, you can pull your e-brake to get a further drift. Now you can also do that too. Like I'm gonna do this one right here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of show a way, another way to do a drift extension. 
So there's a thing called left foot braking. So if you look at my pedal cam right now, you'll come in, you'll be given a full gas or whatever, and you're gonna be assisting with the front brake like this. And this is, I call this like a crab box. I'm, I guess some people, I don't know if I said the name right, but call it Manji. So let's say you come in, kind of ride the front brake a little bit, kind of slow down the drift. Called, I believe it's called Manji. I'm not a drift expert, but let's say I come in, I'm like, okay. Oh, okay, I'm coming in a little hot. Let me ride the front brake a little bit. Kind of crab walk a little bit, throttle out, ride the front brake a little bit. Kind of get that nice slow drift. This is a way to control your drifts while you're, while you're tandem with somebody. Now you have to be careful. If you ride that front brake too much, you can kill out your power band. You can actually, and when the weight transfers, it'll actually throw you out of a drift. So you have to be very aware of what gear you're in, how much acceleration, feathering out the brake. So I'll do a lot of kind of doing, just doing, like I'm in third gear right now, riding the front brake a little bit. Get a little more acceleration to throw out. Kind of riding the front brake. Kind of pop the clutch a little bit there, kind of get a throw. But see, if you don't give it enough gas, you'll die out. So you have to be very aware of how much braking, how much acceleration, you know, or how much gas you're giving it, right? There's always a different scenario to how things are gonna be used. And that's where you have to get the feel. That's why a direct drive wheel is very crucial. If you can feel the car dying out, you can feel the throw of the car. Now, if you're like on a G920 or any type of Logitech, belt driven wheel, you're gonna have a hard time feeling that. And then you also do front brake to get an angle. So when you get the throw of your car, you can just like, oh, I need more angle to tap the front brake. Give it a little bit of gas. Pop the clutch a little bit, coming out, tap the front brake, get a real deep angle. I'm swinging, you know, feather out, but if you don't give it enough, enough gas, you'll die. Gotta ride the front brake a little bit there. And you kind of full throttle it, you gotta ride the front brake. That's how people control when they're in that angle. So I know left foot braking is a very weird feeling, but left foot braking is so crucial. And a lot of people do not use front brake, front left, uh, left foot braking. Now, if you go too much, you'll get too much of an angle. You can actually do this if you give too much left foot brake. So that's why it's very important to get the feel, be consistent with the car that you like, find the settings you want. Kind of like, like on this one, I have my settings set to a or uh, 441 gear ratio. So I have a very short power band gear ratio. So I'm always on the top of a gear. That's why you'll notice on streams I'm in fourth gear, right? Let's see, I mean, pretty much, it's just a lot of it's just clutch and throttle control. You don't need to be rail railing the throttle all the time, right? Like I came into that turn, I didn't hit the acceleration, let the momentum of the body swing, right? Kind of blip the gas a little bit, maybe coming in an angle. You're like, oh, you know what? I need a little bit more angle. Tap the front brake. You get that angle, the floor at the gas, I can shift, go to fourth. You can ride out the left left foot brake a little bit just to kind of get a little bit of an extension. That's where e-brakes come into play. And I went too far there. See, like you're like, oh no, tap, you know, kind of ride the front brake, kind of slow drift it out. Throw the weight transfer, tap the front brake, get a little more angle. Now, this is another way, left foot braking also is another way of like, how to get real close to clipping the edge, right? You can get an angle. Like, I wanna come out to this. Okay, got the edge. So you come out, hit the angle a little bit. As it starts getting sharper, accelerating, tapping the left foot brake, or left foot braking it, kind of angle it. Like, I got real close to the edge. If there was a rail right there, I would've hit that rail. You know, so you gotta be very aware of the angle of the car, how much how much acceleration you're giving it, how much left foot braking you're giving. Like right there, I tapped the left foot brake to get an angle, now I'm just flooring it right now. Kinda let off the acceleration, and I let off too much. So what I'll do on this next round, I will try to like hover the edges. But you have to be aware, because if you do too much, you're gonna slow down dramatically like I'm doing right now. But I'm just demonstrating 
how you can hover the edges to get those nice clips, get those, like I'm kind of on the edge right here. Okay, I got a little more of an angle. Tap kind of right in the front brake. I'm on the edge. A little too much there. Oh, oh give a gas, tap front brake. But see, I was already too close to the edge. That's why, like, again, got to be aware of how much acceleration, how much braking, how much tap, how much throw. It's all about weight transfer. It's all about weight transfer. Like, I'm getting there, let off the gas a little bit. And clutch popping is very important, too, to get yourself to come in. It's like coming an angle, pipe me, pop the clutch. Throw yourself out there. And I'm in fourth gear, so I died out. So there's a, there's a lot of factors with throttle, uh, braking, uh, clutch popping, when the clutch pop, how to clutch pop. For me, the way I do is I clutch pop when I'm doing transfers to get myself that extra jump. Maybe I need a clutch pop while before I go into a transition to throw my butt out there a little bit more. So it means just every scenario is different. This is one of those things where you have to practice. Practice is very good. You got to get the feel. Stay consistent because every car is different. The 200 SX, you know, the Corvette, that, that S13 Corvette, the JZX. I mean, they're all they're all different in their ways. So when you're changing cars all the time, messing with a, do, a tuning the uh, gear ratio. You're, you're getting different feels. Yeah, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of chilling right now. Just just chilling. See you see like I'm not doing a whole lot of work. Like it's it's really not it's not as hard as people think it is. It's just you got to know what to do when, and especially when you're tandeming with somebody. When you're doing tandems with somebody, you're what you're doing is you're not even looking at the track no more. You're literally mirroring them. And you'll see when they come into a turn, you'll see all of a sudden they go into this, this deep angle. You're like, oh my God, they're going into a deep angle. Tap that front brake with them. You have to literally mimic everything they're doing. That's how people do tandems. In VR, it's a little more different in VR just because you're in the car. You know what I mean? You're looking at the car and any little crucial move, it's easier when people are in like third person playing on flat screen. I think it's easier because you see so much more. And pop and clutch every time I transition. Ride the front a little bit there, shift down to third. Kind of hit the bad angle there. Okay, floor it. Tap the front brake, get the angle. Coming in transition, pop the clutch right before I go into it. Slow down a little bit. Because I know I'm kind of going out there. Oh, I'm getting a little in the grass here. I'm going to keep this weird angle. Okay, I got it. Tap front brake. Ride it out a little bit, get the transition. Okay, slow down. Now I need to get the angle. Tap the front brake. Pop the clutch. Oh, I need more angle. Tap the front brake. Keep going. So, but yes, I don't know if that's going to help out, but that's how I look at it. That's how I feel it. And it's just a matter of after you figure out how to control the car, like I said, be consistent. Then that's when you get a little more confident on doing tandems. And you're going to mess up on tandems. It's going to happen. I mean, I messed up a lot on tandems. And the best thing to do is if you're going to go learn how to tandem with random people, set a reset, right? So if you got a wheel, let's say you got the paddle shifts. My reset is literally pulling on both paddle shifts at the same time. I know where they're at at every time, no matter what, what angle. Well, though it does go with the wheel. But, you know, knowing there's paddle shifts there, that's my reset. That's what works for me. I'm going to turn this music up, and I'm going to rip it up for a little bit. Other than that, guys, hopefully that helps out, kind of give a perspective on what I'm doing. I will see you all on TikTok Live. I'll see you all on Twitch. I've been putting a lot of attention on TikTok Live. I've been having a phenomenal time over there. Until then, I'm going to crank this music up. I'm going to get it. And the coffee's kicking up, baby.